Well folks, welcome back to the Frontier Western Heritage Channel. Today I'm going to test fire an original WW Greener 12 gauge shotgun and uh, this actual model here is as near as near as I can tell uh, early 1870s. It's um, a little bit difficult with with some of these shotguns uh, as far as models because there's not a model number uh, necessarily on each on each gun and so sometimes it's a little difficult to tell exactly you know when they were made but the couple of clues uh, well biggest clue anyway uh, it's a breech loader so so that puts it uh, in a certain time period breech loaders started coming on to the market actually as early as the 1840s uh, with pinfire paper shells uh, but the one that really probably the feature here that uh, identifies it more by age than anything is it does not yet have the rebounding hammer and so a rebounding hammer if I were to shoot uh, this shotgun and it went off the hammer would come back to a safe uh, half cock position because the hammer would spring backwards uh, and, and then lock into that half cock position. This uh, shotgun here, this particular Greener model does not have that rebounding hammer and uh, Greener was putting uh, rebounding hammers in the late 1870s so the guess is this is probably early uh, 1870s but still a uh, it may be a little earlier but still a uh, very early uh, antique piece it is a 12 gauge and it has two and a half inch chambers in it which is very common for guns that were uh, come that were made in England uh, English guns were very commonly chambered in two and a half inch shells so I'm going to test fire it and I've got uh, I've trimmed down my shells if you watch the loading paper shotgun shell uh, episode. Uh, you would watch us trim these down to two inches in the loading process for these. So these are black powder paper shotgun shells. And we're going to test it with these. It's a one and a quarter ounce, or excuse me, one and one eighth ounce of uh, number six over 80 grains of uh, double F powder. Uh, a little bit of concern with with bumping up the pressure too much on this on this gun. Uh, learned a lot uh, as I as I started working up loads for this and talked to some folks who really know their English shotguns. This one is proofed as a 13 bore, which is also common in England, and Greener was, was popular and known for restricting the bore and making a better pattern. So it's proofed at a 13 bore, and they would have put in double pressure or more and tested it, and uh, if it held, then it was uh, approved at the bore that it was, uh, that it was designed for. A lot of times these things would have corroded and when they corroded inside and they pitted a little bit it's very common for uh, for folks to have the gunsmith go in there and bore it out and, and clean that up and take those pits out. There's usually enough steel in the barrel and this is Damascus, it's not a real fancy Damascus but it is a Damascus, Damascus steel. Uh, there's usually enough steel to go ahead and, and bore that out, take out those pits, get it back to a nice shiny bore. They did that, someone along the line did that on this gun and unfortunately it pitted again and so Right now, as uh, as this, as we measured it and really and really worked with this gun, uh, it appears that it is the chambers are large enough, the barrel is a large enough diameter that it is actually out of proof. And if it were in England right now, it would not be a legal sale uh, because it's out of proof. Now that doesn't mean it's going to blow up. Uh, if we keep it with light loads, it's still a, a safe barrel, but uh, it's no longer in proof as it was originally as originally manufactured. So um, a little disappointing there, but uh, definitely don't want to put nitro loads through it. There may be some thin spots in the barrel and you would discover those in an unfortunate way. This one uh, will hold up to black powder rounds and so we're going to give it a try. I'm going to pattern this gun uh, out at about 25 yards and just kind of see where we're where we're hitting with this thing. The uh, the bores, I did check the bores. And I'll, I'll got a, a bore diameter, choke diameter gauge here and so I put it down in here and my right barrel is almost up to up into the 10 gauge part of the gauge and so it is uh, uh, definitely not choked it looks to me like it's nearly a cylinder barrel on the right if I put this over on the other side again it is uh, nearly going into the 10 gauge part of the of the gauge and right there at that line again it uh, looks like the left hand is a cylinder bore as well. So we don't have much choke on this thing, really not, nothing at all. But I'm going to pattern each barrel at uh, 25 
yards and just kind of see where we're at and uh, maybe a, uh, a gun that we could uh, take hunting this fall if I get any kind of a decent pattern out of it at all. So let's take a look at the at this target when we put a few uh, put a round into it, change targets, put the left barrel into it and it's gonna evaluate where we're at with this thing. Alright, I think I'll take a check and kind of see where we where we are with that pattern before I go any farther. Well, we have a uh, pretty sparse pattern on here. These are number sixes and an inch and a, or excuse me, an ounce and an eighth of number six shot. So uh, it looks like majority of them uh, came down low. Very few on the upper part of the target. Most are, most are down in the lower area. So pretty, pretty wide pattern and uh, definitely not a long range shotgun. I was hoping to put together kind of a pheasant load uh, with number sixes that would bring a pretty decent bird down. Uh, if that's the case, I'm gonna need to uh, make sure that I'm shooting at uh, pretty close pheasants and uh, Hungarian partridge and sage or uh, spruce grouse and things like that. So. Uh, not a complete disaster, but definitely not a very tight pattern for 25 yards. So we're going to back up and try it, the, uh, try it again with the left barrel, see what the left barrel does. And then sometime in the future, I might load some seven and a halfs and see where seven and a halfs, how they pattern compared to six. But let's take a look at barrel number two. Well, it looks like we are at about the opposite of what W.W. W. Greener was known for. And he was known for that restricted bore, that uh, smaller forcing cone that goes into a smaller bore, calling it a 12 gauge when it's really a, a 13 gauge, but improving the pattern. And uh, in, the, in the life of this shotgun, after it's been bored out and, uh, and cleaned up and then unfortunately pitted again, uh, there's no more room to get those pits out of there without making the barrel dangerously thin. But it is absolutely the opposite of what W.W. W. Greener was trying to do with his more restricted bore. So we've got a very much of a cylinder, it looks like here. We're going to try the left hand side. It's interesting that uh, Greener was in, uh, in business, well, his father, uh, William Greener, was in business in 1829 after apprenticing for a number of, uh, of other shotgun makers and was committed to the muzzle loading double barrel percussion shotgun that that uh, to william greener was the utmost level highest level of manufacture and perfection was in that was in that uh, percussion shotgun and uh, william wellington greener ww w. greener the son was in really uh, really into moving on and moving forward with a breech loading gun and uh, his his father just wasn't there. His father was very much committed to the percussion shotgun. So William Wellington, W.W. W. Greener, made his own company in 1864 and uh, put together a lot of shotguns with some real innovations in them uh, that were breech loading. And then when his father passed away in 1869, the company merged back together again and it became W.W. W. Greener and he was free to make breech loading shotguns. So again, it's hard to tell exactly what this year is, but knowing uh, the year of manufacture of this one is, but knowing some of the features of it, we know that it's probably early 1870s uh, more, than, more than likely. Uh, this one has been redone uh, where it looks pretty nice and uh, and actually would appear to be in better shape than it is when you start looking at the bore and start making bore measurements. But still, hopefully it's a shooter. And uh, we're going to go ahead and try this left barrel next and see what we've got with the left barrel, see if it's consistent with the right, and then make a decision on where to go from there. All right, let's go take a look at barrel number two here, the left-hand side, and see what we got. Well, I did hold it a little bit higher this time, just because I knew what happened with the left, or excuse me, with the right-hand barrel. So I held it a little, a little higher, and I'm getting a different pattern out of this uh, left-hand side, which is much more centered on this paper target. So uh, 
that that's interesting I'll have to try the right again and hold that a little higher and see if see if that's the the difference or maybe that left barrel uh, naturally points a little bit higher than than the right that happens on these two that's why you pattern them because it's not 100% uh, sure exactly that they're both lined up especially when they've been rebored and, and worked on for the last 160 years it's hard to say 150 uh, 150 years so uh, this one is a pretty good pattern coming out of here I, I think that uh, yeah if I had a had a sharp tail in front of me at 25 yards I'd probably do a pretty good job of of putting that bird on the table so a little bit happier with that and it's just fun to play around with these old guns particularly ones that are uh, black powder cartridge or black powder shotgun shells and uh, we'll we'll do this some more with some brass as well I'm going to load some brass shotgun shells and come out and test those also and see what the what the brass shell looks like and test some seven and a halves a lot of playing around we can do with one of these and uh, absolutely just a just a tremendous amount of fun so uh, uh, appreciate you coming and uh, we'll keep playing with the WW Greener and see what we come up with and I'll uh, I'll bring you along for the ride thanks for coming All right, you're running still? Yeah. You got it? No, oh, I shouldn't say that out loud.